Hey everybody, welcome back to the Thinking Crypto channel. I've got big news for you guys. Bitcoin just crossed over $58,000. We're headed to 60 to 65 and then we could potentially see a correction. I'm going to break down the market cycles there. Also, we got more ETFs, Bitcoin ETFs getting approved in Canada. And I'm going to talk about why that's important for getting one approved in the, in the United States. Also, Ripple has moved to Wyoming, one of the most crypto friendly states. And I'll talk about why that's important for Ripple and XRP. Before we get into it, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. Leave a comment below and hit the subscribe button if you're new here. It helps support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. Guys, heads up. I got some great interviews lined up for you guys. This week, I'm interviewing Anthony Scaramucci. And we're going to talk about Skybridge Capital. I'm also in talks with Ripple. Uh, we are going to schedule an interview with David Schwartz. I'm in talks with the SEC to get Hester Pierce on the show. Also, the CEO of Energy Web and if you're into NFTs, I'm going to be interviewing the CEO of Rare. So big things ahead. I want to make sure you guys are subscribed and you got the notification bell enabled. So let's take a look at the market here. Bitcoin over $58,000, currently at $58,185, looking so bullish. And like I said, uh, 60000 is not far away, obviously. But... But, but like I've been talking about on this channel, I'd like to keep it real with you guys. That same move we saw in December to January from 20 to 42,000. If that pattern is repeating right now and we go from uh, the respective 30,000 to 65,000, get ready for a correction. And that's okay. That's healthy. Uh, nothing goes up in a straight line and then we build our support levels then we work our way up and I think we go to a hundred thousand dollars from there the macro level charts such as the stock to flow model a uh, model is on track guys Th this is why I've been sharing this with you for the past two years showing you things are on track market cycles you have to understand them because then you know when to enter the market and when to leave the market if you are cashing out so just just remember that and you know, this crypto asset class is moving at a rapid pace, guys. This technology is getting adopted. And you still have your naysayers. You still have your Peter Schiffs and these people who are uh, Noriel Robini and all these guys who are afraid, right? And I want to share this little uh, image here from the account on Twitter, Poorly Aged Things. A headline reading, the internet may be just a passing fad as millions give up on it. <laughs> Sounds very familiar as, as the people who've been talking about crypto, but it's the next disruptive technology. Blockchain is the underlying technology behind it. And Bitcoin, of course, was the genesis and it is disrupting finance and it's going to disrupt many other industries. Blockchain is the next layer on top of the internet. So I hope you guys get that. We are still very early. There's probably what? 10 to 15 percent of uh, adoption rate of crypto right now when you uh, out of all the people in the world when you think about it so we got ways to go we are the early adopters so count yourself lucky that you're here early guys we have the potential to make significant returns and i know many of you all are already in green i am i'm already making returns here significant but i'm waiting for higher prices as well um obviously have a plan you know cashing on the way cashing out on the way up so canada's first bitcoin Bitcoin ETF hits 421.8 million asset, assets under management in two days. Talk about demand. One analyst said the ETF could reach $1 billion in assets under management by the end of next week. Wow, guys. Uh, a lot of the institutional players are buying up and investing here. And remember what I've been saying. I've been beating the drum on this. When we get a Bitcoin ETF approved in the United States, which is the largest capital market in the world, we're going to see the floodgates open. And remember who I just interviewed, um, Matt Hogan, who is, of course, uh, the CIO, the chief investment officer at Bitwise, and they're trying to get a Bitcoin ETF approved. So if you haven't seen that interview, be sure to check it out. So things are moving ahead here. And uh, this is just one. And there's actually a third Bitcoin ETF that is trying to get approved here in Canada. And a second one was approved. So what's going to happen here? Well, if you have these ETFs getting approved in Canada and a lot of the U.S. companies are going over there to get their stuff approved there and it's getting listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange, that's going to put pressure on the United States. 
because money is going to be leaving the U.S., right? Um, and I think this is going to be great. And we saw Hester Pierce just recently from the SEC say they are ready for a Bitcoin ETF. They want to get this going. And I think with the big players like uh, Fidelity and uh, look NASDAQ and, and the um, S&P Dow Jones, which have built custody and price indices. Um, so you have proper price data and you have proper custody. Those were really the roadblocks historically. And I do believe Jay Clayton, who's now gone from the SEC, was a roadblock because he did not like crypto disrupting the traditional financial world, given his connections to multiple hedge funds. I think Goldman Sachs as well. But he's gone. And Gary Gensler, a, a man that is very knowledgeable about crypto and pro crypto, uh, is coming into the SEC. So I think we will see an ETF approved this year, probably multiple ETFs. And like I said, the floodgates will open. I don't think people really grasp what's happening here. And be sure to check out my interview with uh, Matt Hogan, who explains why getting an ETF is important and what's, what's it going to do for the market. Now, Caitlin Long. Uh, I really love Caitlin Long. She's, she's a great person and she's so smart. I've interviewed her on my channel a couple of years ago, two times in fact. We talked about the Token Taxonomy Act, the Blockchain Coalition, uh, what they're doing in Wyoming. We talked about uh, Facebook's Libra. So she's very smart. Um, she's leading the charge in Wyoming, which is one of the most crypto-friendly states. And here's what she just tweeted literally about an hour ago. Welcome to Wyoming Ripple. More crypto companies are realizing Wyoming is a better uh, domicile than uh, Delaware due to our crypto-friendly laws. People often ask why, uh, how many companies have relocated slash... Uh, re Sorry, I can't read that to Wyoming. We don't know. We don't keep a list. Uh, we don't keep lists and we like it that way. <laughs> Hashtag XRP. So why is this significant? Well, Ripple currently is, is facing some regulatory uncertainty due to the BS lawsuit from the SEC. And of course, yesterday in, in yesterday's video, I covered what a former SEC chair, Mary Jo White, said that this lawsuit is dead wrong. And that's why Jay Clayton did on the way out. He ran away with him and his cronies and left it for the other administration to clean this up. So uh, the SEC is in the wrong here. I think we've covered that at ad nauseum. Um, but this gives Ripple a bit of regulatory green light because each individual state, um, while I understand the federal law supersedes individual states, it gives them some open uh, doors here, some, some light here from a regulatory standpoint. So I think it's smart that they've moved there. And this could open up some avenues with them working with payment companies and banks in the United States. So Smart move on their part, and I think we have to wait and see what this means. I'm going to ask Ripple's um, David Schwartz in my interview, you know, could he shed any light? He may not be able to because obviously the lawsuit, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on, right? But I'm going to ask anyway and see what he says. Uh, but this is good. This is good news, and I hope more states follow Wyoming's lead and they become more crypto friendly. Like, for example, New York's bit license is is crap man that is annoying you know how many exchanges and companies want to work in the in new york and they have that stupid bit license they take forever to 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 get past and companies are waiting forever to set up there it's just stupid right and it's really the old guard of wall street that is that put that in place so they can control who comes in who goes out and all that bs and it's really garbage but i'm glad these other states are opening up to be more crypto friendly. So like I said, I hope more states follow Wyoming and uh, Wyoming's lead, excuse me. And I'm glad to see Ripple has moved here. So we shall see what the outcome is here. But I do think it is positive given, once again, the, the, the regulation here, because the other aspect, Caitlin is the founder of Avanti Bank. It's a digital bank. And I've actually interviewed, let me pull it up here. Um, I believe there's CTO at Avanti. Let me see here. Yes, there's CTO, um, Brian Bishop. And we talked about 10 months ago where he talked about what they're trying to do. And if you can have a digital bank and um, you know be in Wyoming and operate under the clear regulations there, I think once again, that's beneficial for XRP. So if you guys haven't seen these interviews, please check them out. I, this is why I bring the interviews for, for you guys. So you can hear from the people who are 
actually building, who have skin in the game. They're not random people on Twitter. They are invested. They're working. They're talking to regulators. And I hope, uh, like I said, you guys would subscribe and hit the notification bell because I'm bringing more interviews for you guys soon. And I will continue to do that. Now, finally, uh, the CBDC race continues, as we've been talking about on this channel for the past two, three years. Every country, every central banks will have a C CBDC, a digital version of their fiat, because we are headed to the digital economy, the token economy. And this is all good news for Bitcoin and the crypto market, because they will educate the masses on how blockchain, how digital wallets work. And people will be able to use these digital fiats to then buy Bitcoin and crypto. You're going to have interoperability. And those of you who know about, you know, what I've been talking about with XRP and CBDCs, um, a couple of things. CBDCs will be able to be issued on the XRP ledger. I'll talk to Ripple's David Schwartz about that. But also, XRP will be the bridge asset for uh, CBDCs. We've seen their proposals, their models, they've talked to central banks, um, and, and they've, sh look, Ripple's CEO has shared the stage with the IMF and many other things. So I, I'm not making this up, I'm just letting you know, but notice all these random countries and many of, like, you don't even hear, like Morocco says they're going to launch their digital currency, are coming out of the woodwork. We know the big players are going to do it. We know the digital dollar is being worked on in the United States. So it's only a matter of time. And I bring you back to this image here uh, of, of this headline about the internet. The internet may be just a passing fad as millions give up on it. You know, some people are like, oh, you saw what happened in 2017 to the crypto market? It crashed. It's a bubble. So they use those things to distract you from the fundamentals, the actual technology, the future of what's going to be taking place here, guys. And Bitcoin and crypto is a big part of that. Many folks don't realize what's happening. Many folks just follow the media on TV and crowds, right? They hear their neighbors buying Bitcoin, then they go buy Bitcoin versus let me take time to research this and understand it for myself. And I think, uh, like I said, if you're here early, like you are now watching this video and you have a position, you are lucky, my friends. You are lucky. This is the same as getting into Google, Amazon, um, your, your Facebooks, your Ebays back in the 90s. Obviously, Facebook came in the early 2000s. But you get my analogy um, of getting a position there where people were still skeptics, where things were being built, but it was the future, right? And that's where we're at right now with crypto and blockchain, guys. And uh, like I said, pat yourself on the back that you get it. So, guys, what do you think? Are you in agreement with me as far as Bitcoin's movements that we go to 65 and then um, then maybe we pull back, have a healthy correction, then work our way up to 100,000? Leave your thoughts and comments below. Hit the thumbs up button. Share this video. Like I said, guys, subscribe with the notification bell enable. You don't want to miss my interview with Anthony Scaramucci that's coming up uh, this week. It'll be up on Wednesday. It's going to be a good one. We're going to talk about a lot of things, guys. So thank you for your support, and I'll talk to you all later. Thank you.